First up on the factor, domestic violence is not just someone hitting their partner or spouse. It also includes stalking. Stalking can be threatening seriously body injury or death or threatening property damage. The rate of domestic violence in Texas continues to rise with more than 550 women killed by their partners between 2012 and 2016. Harris County has the highest number of domestic violence deaths in the state. The state district attorney's office is partnering with nonprofit organizations to provide services for victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. For more on this, we're joined by Harris County Assistant District Attorney Chris Handley. Now, Chris, when people think about stalking, they don't necessarily consider it a crime, but it, it could be deadly and it could be a crime as well, right? And that's correct. And I think part of the issue is that a lot of people don't necessarily think of it as a crime. <laughs> um, you know, five years ago, the law changed in Texas to make stalking more like the, talk, the type of stalking that we think of uh, when we think of the word stalking. Okay. And so if you're harassing somebody repeatedly, that is stalking. Uh, and what kind of crime would that be under Texas law now? Uh, that's actually a third degree felony now. Ooh. So a minimum of two years in prison and maximum of 10 years in prison. So it has teeth now. It now actually has teeth. Whereas before it was a misdemeanor, now we can actually put somebody away before they commit some of these more serious crimes. So when someone is victim a victim of stalking, what could that eventually lead to, especially when we're talking about a domestic violence type of situation? Well, and sadly, a lot of the times uh, I'm in the adult sex crimes division, which means we primarily handle uh, rapes, kidnappings, that sort of thing, uh, often between partners and dating relationships. And when we go back and we look at the evidence, it's not surprising to us if we, and obviously we have the 20-20 the hindsight, but a lot of times we're just like, we wish somebody would have come forward at that point when they saw how bad it was getting. Uh, and stepped in because then we wouldn't have a kidnapping, we wouldn't have a sexual assault, and God forbid we wouldn't have a murder. And that's where the victim should take responsibility, and I really hate to say it that way, but if you, re if you realize that you're being stalked by someone, then call the police or go to the district attorney's office and get it there before it graduates into something else, physical or even worse, deadly. And a lot of these with with stalking in particular, it's usually where a woman or a man has already separated themselves from the partner. Mm -hmm. uh, they've partially broken the cycle of violence. And so that's kind of the critical moment where they can get that help. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times if they're barely out of that cycle of violence, and again, the cycle of violence would be you're with somebody, they're abusing you, but you keep taking them back, but you never fully split. Well, with stalking, uh, we get that split a little bit, mm -hmm. and then you start getting the text messages, uh -huh. maybe they show up and it escalates, it escalates, it escalates, and then you're back in the cycle of violence. Um, Anytime anyone feels threatened, if they feel harassed, they should come, they should make a report. Uh, a lot of people think that, well, if I make a report to the police, they're going to come in, they're going to kick my door down, they're going to tear apart my family. Uh, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to treat every case individually, we're going to look at every case individually, and we're going to make sure if it is serious, we're going to take care of it. Um, nothing is too minor to us to look at. That's what we're here for. So. Everyone needs to err on the side of caution. Um, don't wait till it's too late to report. So for, for some of those uh, signs that may be uh, stalking, what can we consider stalking? Can we consider not just a person outside of our house or following us, but maybe sending text messages, excessive text messages that we don't want, maybe on social media? Would we call those forms of stalking as well? And, and that's the great thing about the way that our stalking law is. It's what we popularly think of as stalking is now what Texas stalking is. Okay. So it can be those text messages. Uh, it can be coming by the house repeatedly, waiting for you after work. It can be threatening you, threatening to, uh, you know, sadly, recently we get a lot of cases where uh, if you don't stay with me, if you don't do this, uh, I'm going to send naked pictures. I'll mm -hmm. disclose all those things from the past. Um, that can all be stalking, but it all falls under the umbrella of stalking, whether it's merely texting somebody all the way up 
to threatening to harm them, uh, threatening to harm their family members. All right, Chris Hanley from the Harris County District Attorney's Office. Thank you for joining us and that valuable information. I'm sure it will help a lot of people out there.